Today is Pentecost Sunday. It's one of the most exciting days in our church year. It's truly the the birthday of the church, a, a time when disciples no longer feared, but were energized to proclaim the good news of God's love through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And along with that came the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Hello, my name is Deborah Shower, and I'm the pastor of the Good People Connected with Spirit of Hope United Methodist Church. Now, because of COVID-19, well, our church, like many others in the valley, uh, they have been doing things differently along with us. But we are still doing what God has called us to do. Throughout history, the church has prospered in difficult times, and today is no different. So we are still the church. (laughs) We're just doing things just a little bit different. But we hold tight to the truth that we will come back together in this worship center to worship in person. But less really do what we have come here to do, what you've come here to do, and why I'm here. It is to go to a time of worship. So let us prepare our hearts for worship. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire our hearts with your fiery presence. Let your flame burn within us, stirring us to action. Come, Holy Spirit, energize our lives to work for God. Let your wind of hope swirl around us, lifting and moving us from complacency. Come, Holy Spirit, pour your blessing on us. Let your presence challenge us to proclaim God's presence and love in in everything we say and do. Rushing wind of the Spirit, breathe new life into us. Blazing flame of the Spirit, burn away our fears. Comforting presence of the Spirit, heal our wounds. Let us be prepared to worship and praise you, O Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, come unto us this day and fill us with your love. Make us people who will proclaim God's good news in all that we do. Almighty God, your Holy Spirit came to Jesus' disciples, and they were hidden, oh, in an upper room in Jerusalem. And the next thing that happened was a violent wind and tongues of fires were upon them, symbols of a new thing happening in their lives. May your Holy Spirit 
burst into our lives today, encouraging and inspiring us to proclaim boldly the good news of Jesus Christ, who offers healing and hope to all people. Gracious Lord, we aren't ready. It's easier for us to hide in the upper room of our lives, to let the world go by and not acknowledge your presence. But you have challenged us to come alive again with your love and your words of healing mercy. Forgive our hesitant witness and our complacent spirits. Heal our fears and our wounds. Help us to be agents of healing and hope to others. Challenge and inspire us to overcome our our feelings of inadequacy and remind us that we are called your beloved children and have given us what we need to proclaim your good news. Powerful God, With your power and wonder, knock us off our seats with the wind of the Holy Spirit. Don't let us just sit back and rest as though nothing important was happening. Remind us that you have come to to bless and prepare us for your service. Now, in the time of proclamation and celebration, that we need to grab a hold of. Now is the birth of your church, not as an exercise of futility, but as a dramatic group of people who who know you and, and love you as you know and love each one of us. Flames of your spirit step into our hearts. Make us so joyful that we find it difficult to just sit back and and watch. We want to be a part of your healing, love, and mercy. We want to be people who bear the word that your love for us is eternal. That Jesus Christ, our Savior, proclaimed and taught that love in all that he did and and what he said, modeling for us a, a new way to live. Pick us up and propel us forward into your world. Help us to remember that you have given to us what we need to be your disciples. We just need to say a resounding yes to you. Thank you, gracious Lord, for all of the wondrous patience and blessing you pour out onto our lives each and every day as we offer our lives back to you in joy and hope. Amen. And now, with the confidence of being named as children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem, and when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. They were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there, amazed and perplexed, what can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen, listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood, and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Have you noticed how religious words are constantly crossing over into secular usage? At one time, many years ago, um, many years ago, they seemed to know their place and they stayed there. But now, oh, they keep moving back and forth. I really believe that this is a, a good thing. I welcome this intersection because by doing so, they become the glue that holds it all together and fills in the mysterious blanks of our existence. For example, the word commitment. Oh, it's a word that belongs to religion. As followers of Christ, we talk about commitment to Christ as a key belief of our faith. When individuals join, well, the United Methodist Church, these prospective members answer questions about their commitment to Christ. The Bible calls our relationship with God a covenant. And in order to establish a covenant with God or with another person, commitment is oh, a primary requirement. When counseling individuals about marriage, I stress the importance of this covenant that they're making to each other in the presence of God and speak many times about commitment. The important answer is not, I do, but I will. The question isn't, isn't do you love one another? The real question is, will you love one another no matter what happens or what surprises the future holds for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health? Even if you grow fat and ugly, lose all your hair, and the passion dies. This is what you have to commit to for the rest of the life, whether you feel like it or not. Will you love one another? Now that's commitment. I know he wants me to make a commitment, but I'm just not sure I'm ready. How do I know this is the right one? I mean, he has done everything right. Very polite, not a lot of pressure. He even opened the door for me. 
I mean, come on, Michelle. This is exactly what you said you've always wanted. You're done kissing frogs. And he's so nice. So, what do you think? I do. <laughs> I mean, I will. I mean... I'll take it. You can find your perfect match at Decana Dealerships. Believe in nice. Would you be interested in meeting... Now that commercial shows that commitment has moved really <laughs> from the realm of religion to that of life, making both more relevant. Religion and, and life are seen as being in a covenant relationship with commitment as uh, its primary requirement. Faith is another one of those words that has crossed over. But the word faith might be described as the most religious of all. In fact, you could say it is another word for religion, for they are used interchangeably or slide together nicely as, oh, in religious faith. For the religious, faith is the alpha and the omega. It's the goal and the method by which the goal is achieved. Faith also classifies as the most religious of all words. Oh, it's also crossed over as a greeting or affirmation, people, maybe not saying it so much now, but you heard people say to each other, keep the faith, baby. There seems to be an instinctive understanding of the meaning of the word faith. And since that understanding is innate and universal, well, there's no need to define it. If pressed for a definition, maybe the word Belief would come up, but everyone knows that they don't mean the same thing. Faith is what holds together when beliefs fall apart. Anyone who gets on a, an airplane has faith. Think about it for a second. Is it really logical or sensible to believe that those tons of steel metal and rivets can fly? Yet we regularly pack our suitcases and stake our lives on that conviction. We walk into that machine without the slightest question or fear, at least relating to the question of whether it will fly. For most of us, our hearts don't flutter. Our palms don't get sweat all over them. We simply fashion our seatbelts and, and grab a magazine. But our faith goes even deeper than that. How many of us have ever looked into the cockpit to see if the pilot is really there? Or how do we know that there's fuel in the tanks or question when the last maintenance check was on this plane? We don't know these things. We take, uh, we take it as, well, they say, by faith. And then... Oh, there's spirit. Spirit is one of those wonderful words that moves easily across the boundary between what is religion and what is secular. Spirit is, of course, an important word in a religious person's dictionary. It is, after all, one of the ways in which we understand and address God. But spirit is just as much at home in the world of everyday life and events. Oh, there is school spirit. There is team spirit. There is spirit of friendship, the spirit of St. Louis, and of course, oh, alcoholic spirits. Spirit is such a comfortable word for people in general. We really should not tempt, attempt to you know, define it. To define might ruin it because the very nature of spirit is mystery. Spirit is always elusive, always nebulous, always moving and changing. 
If we could define it, our definition would be obsolete in the very next instant. To define is to control, to categorize is to confine, and the spirit will have none of that. Within the Trinity, which includes Father, Son, and Spirit, and we understand and give names to those first two, Father and Son. Father is Yahweh, Elohim, and, you know, like that. Son, of course, refers to Jesus, but spirit, how do we name the spirit? To name a thing is to define it, and so spirit remains nameless in the Trinity. Bob Morley, in his book, Aerobics for the Spirit, says that father and son are relational terms, but not the spirit. You cannot name the unnameable or define the indefinable or assign a function to ultimate reality. So we just won't try. We will just let it be. Spirit is pure being. Yeah, I kind of disagree with that statement because I believe the spirit is holy and I can give names to the spirit like comforter and counselor. When the thousands of pilgrims came to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, the followers of Jesus were gathered together in a room. And in the morning, they were startled by the sound of a mighty wind as that Holy Spirit filled the space, then filled them. They were given a new power. That's the Spirit. What exactly happened At Pentecost, we really do not know except that those gathered in that room experienced the power of the Holy Spirit flooding their being in such a way that they had never experienced before. This coming of the Spirit brought new power to them, especially Peter. Jesus promised the Spirit to his followers as he prepared to leave the world. The Spirit would serve as comforter and counselor, continuing to teach followers of Jesus and reminding them of what Jesus had said. The Spirit was accompanied by the sound that was like a mighty wind. And those who witnessed this event saw what seemed to be Tongues of fire resting on the believers. But not only that, these, these disciples were empowered to speak in tongues other than their own native language. God wants to bring that same spirit into our lives. Perhaps you may feel that you are inadequate, unworthy. Yet the message is clear. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done or failed to do, God is ready to bring new life and new power to you right now. Your life can be restored to new power that you never dreamed possible. You know, during the Depression, Mr. Ira Yates was like, oh, many ranchers and farmers that lived in West Texas. He had a a lot of land and a lot of debt. Mr. Yates wasn't able to make enough on his ranching operation to pay the principal and interest on his mortgage because of this predicament. He was in danger of losing his ranch and living on government subsidy. Day after day, as he grazed his sheep over those rolling West Texas hills, he was no doubt greatly troubled about how he would pay his bills. Oh, and definitely not lose his ranch or his house. Then a seismographic crew from an oil company came into the area and told him there might be oil on his land. And they asked to drill a wildcat well, and he signed a lease contract. (laughs) 
thinking to himself, what do I have to lose? At 1,115 feet, they struck a huge oil reserve. Now, the first well came in at 80,000 barrels a day. Many subsequent wells were more than twice as large. In fact, 30 years after the discovery, the government tested oh, one of the wells, and it showed it still had a potential flow of 125,000 barrels of oil a day. And Mr. Yates owned it all. The day he purchased the land, he had received the oil and mineral rights. Yet he had been living on government relief, a millionaire living in poverty. Why? Well, he did not know the oil was there, even though he owned it all. You know, at times, you and, and I are a lot like Mr. Yates. We are heirs of a vast treasure, and yet we live in spiritual poverty. We are entitled to the gifts of the Holy Spirit and that energizing power, and yet we live unaware of our birthright. Today, we remember how rich we are. But you may say to yourself, well, you know, I'm doing just fine. I don't need any help from the Spirit. I, I don't need that energizing power. But the truth is you do. You need this spirit because Jesus did not specifically address every situation we would or you know, might encounter in our lives. It's the spirit at work in us today that makes Christianity something that's current and alive. The spirit is what gives the church authority to address situations that the gospel writers never conceived of. The spirit is the power of God working in us to guide us in ways of Jesus. It's what makes the love and wisdom of Jesus our own. (laughs) That's what makes commitment, faith, and spirit more than simply secular words. We need the power and the freedom of the spirit this Holy Spirit within the church today. For as the prophet Zechariah reminds us, God's kingdom shall not be built by power nor by might alone, but by the spirit of the living God. Holy Spirit, come. That great spirit that blows through all creation also blows through each one of us, giving us life and defining us. That's the spirit because you are the spirit and I am the spirit. And may that spirit rise up within us. Amen. Announcements are always part of any church because Well, when we share announcements, then you know what's really kind of going on within the body of Christ. And, you know, we're no different. We have announcements also. So I want to share with you some things that are happening here, even through this pandemic. Hopefully you will choose to help us with things that we're just doing around here. Please consider going to Spirit of Hope UMC Facebook page that's entitled Family and Friends. There's a poll in there regarding worship service. And when we come back together, when we're in person, oh, we'd really like your input about what time our worship sh- service should be. So go to it and give us your opinion. And if you don't go to Facebook, email me at SOHPastor at gmail.com and tell me what time you would like to come back together at the service here. Uh, But think about doing that. We're also going to be doing another barbecue with 
um, Justice Center. And it's going to be May 29th. Uh, in the past, we have uh, asked you to help help us with this endeavor by donating food to us and also donating your, yourselves to be servers um, on this day of the barbecue. And this year, we are getting to go down there. We'll be wearing our masks and uh, things like that. We have basically all of the food, but we still do need volunteers to help serve. Also, you're invited to your computer, your tablet, or smartphone on Sundays at 10 a.m. for a Zoom gathering or check-in and prayer. You know, the this is a reoccurring Zoom meeting. All you have to do is uh, go to the Visionary, and you can see a link where you can sign right up, or you can use these ID number and passcode to get in. And boom, you're right there in the meeting. There's no waiting room that's involved with this. Of course, I have the power to kick you out, but I won't. (laughs) After that Zoom meeting, then you're also invited to join us on an online uh, Bible study prepared by the Bible Project, and it's called Church at Home. Each week, we discuss a topic that has been presented by one of the scholars from the Bible Project through an audio talk or video. It's a great time uh, to come together, to see each other on Zoom. But also, you can learn something. So think about joining us on that. Another opportunity that has been set up through Zoom is also the Women's Bible Study that meets every Friday afternoon at 1 p.m. Here's the ID uh, meeting and also the passcode to get in. We have finished the book by... And Graham Lotz, the Daniel Key. And we're moving on to our next study. We're taking just one Friday off. And um, and that's going to be this coming Friday. And we're going to be moving into our next study, which is called 12 Women from the Bible. And it begins on June 4th. So with that, remember, no Zoom Bible study this next week coming up. And then the final thing, or a couple of things that's going on, is I'm still doing virtual Zoom office hours um, on Wednesdays, starting at 9 in the morning until noon. And if you need to talk with me, again, you just kind of use those meeting ID numbers or passcode, or you can go to the Visionary, and you can just have that link and cl- click on it. Choir will be meeting on Wednesday, and so look for an email from Tina that gives you all of the information on how you can join that. So I think that's really all of our announcements. I'm sure I probably forgot something, but let me know if you want something else said um, during our time of announcements so we can know what's going on here at Spirit of Hope United Methodist Church. God, out of God's great love, has created you. Jesus Christ, out of his great love, has redeemed you. The Holy Spirit, out of great love, has lifted and inspired you to go in peace and service throughout God's world, proclaiming the good news of peace, love, hope, and joy to all. So go in peace. Amen. So have a wonderful week. Allow that spirit, the Holy Spirit, to use you today and every day. Be safe. And God bless. Mm-hmm.